weird things. But... Got it. And so, Zav, have you done that before? You click on the globe icon. Oh, that's right. I yes, have done that then, before. So I, I picked English. English. Yeah, okay. pick English. And we recommend not choosing the mute option. So, okay, great. So we're all set. Yes, I'm just then, trying to me, me, myself here. Okay. Okay. Uh, and Alex, do you want to introduce yourself? Um, I'm Alex Dami. I'm an intern with the um, Planning and Evaluation Division of the Human Services Department. So my internship is uh, through UC Berkeley's uh, Master's in Social Welfare program, um, but I'm local here to Santa Cruz. So nice to meet you all. Awesome. Thank you for your work. You've been working hard. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. And, um, you know, we didn't introduce ourselves. Some of you I think Elaine's met us in a training and, and Zav, you are just meeting us now, but we are the co-facilitators for the uh, for core investments. And we just happen to both be named Nicole. <laughs> so it sometimes <laughs> creates confusion, but sometimes it's easier because people address emails to the <laughs> Nicole's plural and we, we respond either way. That's awesome. So I'm Nicole Lezen. And I'm Nicole Young. And um, Stella Larman, who is on the Spanish channel, is the person who does these live interpretations. And she also translates all of our material, our slides and handouts into Spanish. Wow. Yeah, so it's wow. really good Stella. work, sister. That's awesome. That's great. So um, this is an opportunity to ask general questions about the, um, the tier that you're thinking of applying for, the small grants. Um, and uh, Elaine Zav mentioned that he didn't have specific questions yet. So, and you mentioned that you had uh, had some ideas sparked by the logic model theory of change training to do some work with your board on trying to line up some ideas and... Um, yeah, we have a little grant committee. Well, our board is uh, six people. <laughs> so we okay. have a little uh, grant committee that uh, is going to be working on this together. And so nice. um, I think each one of us are trying to, we all tried to get on together. Uh, you've met Serge, she's our executive director. Um, and then a couple of other people are going to be on different calls just so that we can have a flavor you know, at moving forward collectively. So that Great. was our strategy. Great. Yeah, Sir, Serge <laughs> has been a, a steady presence on our core coffee chats. We appreciate it. And um, I know Serge and Ken signed up for some one-on-one -on -one TA as well. So. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. perfect. <laughs> we have a great team of people. We're super dedicated to bringing this to our community. I can yeah. see that. Um, so, Elaine and Zav, have you had a chance to review the application itself? Uh, not yet. Okay. Um, I wonder if it might be helpful to walk through it. What do oh. you think, Nicole? <laughs> yeah, I think that's probably a good use of good use of the time. Okay, let me pull up. So, um, I'm gonna share my screen if that's okay with everybody and just pull up the, um, the Word version that I, ha that I have. Um, but you can also look at this. If, if uh, Elaine, I think you were at the applicants conference, is that right? Yes. And Zav, you, you said you'd miss that. So the, the actual application will have to be done through a grant uh, portal, an online portal. Yeah. Um, and that will have some procedures uh, associated with it, like uh, counting the characters and spaces in the responses that you have. And it'll have some drop down menus and some features like having to finish one set before you move on to the next. And if you haven't already, you'll want to create a login for that process. So we won't get into that right now. 
but just know that that's when you submit your application, that's the way to do it. But right now I just wanted to walk through some of the content and see if that sparks some questions for you. And then um, just encourage you to spend some time with the application. So on the HSD website, um, and I think Nicole has posted a link for that um, with a link to the Word application that I'm just going to show you. So when you're, if you're new to um, grant writing, or even if you're a veteran of it, um, sometimes it's handy to have something like this Word version, just so you're not um, going back and forth on the screens on the online portal. I personally prefer to work um, on something where I can fiddle with it a little bit more or share it. Uh, Elaine, you mentioned you're working with a group. Um, yeah. and, um, so sometimes this is totally up to you. There's nothing, um, it's just a personal preference of how you want to assemble information and share it with others. So in the end, you will have to put it into the online portal um, unless you ask for, for another way to do it. But for, for just sort of um, brainstorming and seeing what fits where and that sort of thing, um, I, I think it's worth considering working with this Word version. And I'll share it right now. So can you all see this? Yes, I can. Okay. So can you? Thumbs up. Great. Thank you. Okay. So um, this is text that's pulled from the online portal. So, but even in the Word document, you, you can see there are the drop-down menus. Oh, cool. Yeah. So it'll show you. There's a little tiny arrow there. So this first part is... Um, just asking for some information about your organization. And it's pretty straightforward. And some of it you may want to come back to. So maybe after you've done your, the body of your proposal, you might want to come back and do your tight three-sentence description. So you don't have to do everything in sequence using the Word document. It's going to ask you for a service category and there are lots of them. It's gonna ask you whether you're a single agency or you're the lead for a collaborative proposal of two or more agencies. And again, there's, there's a lot more detail about this in the applicants conference recording. But just in terms of the kinds of questions you may have with, for each other, and you're in a group that's considering what you wanna uh, apply for funding for. So you're thinking about the core conditions and which one is primarily the one that your group addresses. So here's the list. So they're grouped by the, the impacts for each core condition. So health and wellness has four impacts to choose from. Lifelong learning and education has five, et cetera. And if you want more information about the core conditions and, and those um, impact areas, there's several options. There's the core conditions training we did recently. There's the, uh, the uh, through um, a core coffee chat. There is some information on the data share um, platform that you may be familiar with. Let me ask you a quick question. Sure. If, if what we're going to do is going to hit a, a couple of the the core, I mean, ser, ser, several of them. Yeah. You could only pick one. Yes. Unfortunately, it's the one that uh, your proposal primarily addresses, but you do have an opportunity to describe your work linking to the other areas. And this is okay. this is a function of this online portal with the way these drop downs work. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, so think about a primary one, one and the yeah. understanding is that many of you ideally will be connected to others as well. Okay. All right. And, then, and it'll tease that out. Yes. Me. Yes. Okay. Next. So then you'll, you'll describe the, the need or 
you know, sometimes that's described as a problem statement or a need statement. So, so what's, what is it that you're um, trying to address? Are there some community strengths and assets associated with that? Who is experiencing those needs? So I can see that both of you have already described some of that in your, when, in your introductions. And then what can you tell us about, or tell HSD about the, um, the extent of the inequities or those, the characteristics of those needs? Um, and this is just something to think about here is that if there are data that you have that are in the form of statistics or something more formal, great. If there are things that are more anecdotal, stories, um, quotes from people you're working with, great. That can bring things to life. If there are things that are um, data that don't exist yet or don't exist in a form that's helpful to you, that might be worth noting. Do you think quotes from members are helpful? Yes, I think, um, so think about, somebody's gonna be reviewing this who may or may not know very much about your program. And so um, things that bring it to life and help somebody see what you're doing and understand what you're doing and why you think it is effective belongs here. Okay, all right, all right. And especially somebody else's words that use our product goes a long way. Yeah, okay. And then dimensions of equity are listed in this drop down. So you may have different ones. And there, there is an other opportunity there that you can describe. And after you describe the problem or need that you're addressing, then you get into what you're doing about it. So you're going to talk about what, what should be done, what you see as the, the services and why you think they'll work, who is going to be served um, with those services. And then you will talk about some of your choices about why you're choosing to do what you're doing in the way that you're doing it. So this is the part that is the, um, the rationale for your approach. And again, there are tools that might be helpful here if, um, if you would like to go a little further in thinking about how to describe strategies and their links to outcomes. We have an upcoming uh, training on some of those core tools. They're also available on the DataShare platform. And then you'll be just walking through explaining to those reviewers what you're doing and why you think it'll work and what you expect to accomplish. So here are the statements about that. and why you think your services are or will be effective and what tells you that. So you may have, for example, a track record from your previous experience. You may have a model from another place that you're applying here. You may have um, some um, implementation of um, a an approach or a training or a curriculum that has been evaluated elsewhere. And you have reasons to think that it's going to be the same here or you're adapting it in a way that will work here. And then there's some questions about who you intend to serve and how, you, uh, how that might change over time or not. Maybe you're planning to serve the same number of people over these three year grant periods and then a little more about them. How old are they? What's their race and ethnicity, gender, primary language, and part of the county? So for example, Zav, you mentioned that one of your goals is to expand to different parts of the county. So you might have a particular area there. 
And again, all of these have an other. So if you have a, a different way of thinking about this, just use that. <laughs> And then there's some questions about the um, federal poverty level and who you're serving and how they fit into these categories. And that's all listed here so you can see that. And then you're going to tell the reviewers about what are you bringing to the table that that helps you get this done. So what, what can you talk about in terms of your staff, your infrastructure, your um, experience? And then a question about how you define and advance equity in your organization. And that's gonna be different for everybody, but there are just some ideas there. And then finally, there are budget questions and there are specific budget forms that you can download. They're different if you're a single agency applying or you're part of a collaborative. And so those are the main pieces that you will have to develop in order to submit your proposal. Alex, Nicole, missed anything there? It was helpful to see the um... I, uh, yeah, <laughs> we, uh, we don't let me touch things on the computer. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Full disclosure, somebody else touches the computer stuff. <laughs> okay. No, I, you know, that's, um, Elaine, that's a good thing to know up front. Um, and so there are, especially in a team effort, there are lots of different ways to contribute to this. Exactly. Um, yep. And so, um, yeah, when we're doing our own proposals, we often do things up too. And sometimes people can work very seamlessly together on something like that. But um, if you already know that about yourself and your colleagues know that, terrific. Then you have yeah. a different way of doing this. Yeah. Yes. We're Good far ahead. Because, <laughs> yes, I have deleted things that uh, were really important. And so, and I didn't mean to. Yeah, <laughs> this that, that can happen. No, and, and, um, and so that's part of this process is figuring out who's got different strengths and who does what and yeah. how you share information with each other and how you keep track of the things that you've decided yeah. you want to do. I mean, it's a huge learning curve. We it's just got our 501c3 uh, in uh, 2020. So, I mean, we've all, we're brand new. Great. Well, yeah. so lots of learning, but also a nice clean slate to set all this yeah. stuff up from the start. So. Exactly. And we're doing it with such love. It's just, it's amazing. Yeah. That's it's great. a really good team. Good. <sighs> So I'm guessing that raised some questions, but if you have some questions now, just on that are brought up by that process that we just reviewed, let us know. And if you have questions later, um, they can be submitted. If you have questions about the application process and the application content, those should go to Alex and her colleagues at the human services department. But if you have questions about the concepts behind the core conditions or the tools that we're talking about, the Nicole's are your, your next step. Okay. Okay. We're trying to, we're trying to um, be helpful. You are. But not get into the weeds of every individual application. Sure. We want to be fair yeah. too, that everybody gets the same information. Oh, we have to be. And, you know, um, I love it that it's so transparent and, you know, that way nothing gets rejected or there's no concerns that there was any kind of favoritism or any of that stuff. And, you know, um, thank you. Yeah. That's yeah, a big you guys goal. are doing a really, really, really good job at that. I'm, I'm really impressed. I really am. And thank you. And you're also being fair to the community to help people who, you know, I haven't written a grant in decades. Right. And so, <laughs> I mean, I'm like cleaning out the old cobwebs. <laughs> so, 
it's always it's always yeah. a, a new experience. And you know, Nicole and I uh, worked on a couple of big grants uh, over the summer, and it was just like, <laughs> well, let me just say, our sympathies are with everyone, right? It's, right. It's no matter how how often you've done it or how many different kinds of grants you've written, and we've written a lot, it's always um, fastidious. It's always hard. Yeah. 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 Um, and he, you know, our, uh, we're part of a network, right? So uh -huh. the first cafe, so we had to apply to the network in order to even be a cafe. So that was a whole nother process too. So, I mean, you well, know, that's great though. That might give you some, some good language and ideas. exactly, exactly. It got the wheels turning in a way that, you know, and so let me just make my 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 pitch about how um, well. First of all, thank you for the comments about the transparency because that is a huge goal of ours, and HSDs, and um, we really hope that no matter what happens as an outcome of the of the application process, whether you're funded or not, that you will feel that it was fair and you had a fair shot at it. Um, because obviously everybody can't be funded, so unfortunately some people who write great proposals are not necessarily going to prevail or at least not That's at the sure. level, right? This time, yeah. This time. So um, so that leads me to my next point, which is that, you know, from personal experience, like the, the grants that we wrote over the summer weren't funded, but, um, and it was disappointing, but it also felt like that work was not in vain, that we had some partnerships that came out of it. We had some ideas that came out of it. We had some writing that came out of it that we can use in other ways for other pitches and other proposals we hope in the future. Sure. Um, so it it's never um, completely for naught, even yeah. when it's disappointing to not get funded because you will have um, the, the results of all this effort to hopefully live to see another day. Yeah, for sure. Fodder to grow in for sure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So either yeah. another proposal or a direction that you learn that you your board wants you to pursue or that you identify a staffing gap that you then get to fill in so many ways. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Or connection, you know. There you the, go. So yeah. check. <laughs> Already done that. Yeah. Um, is there anything else we can talk through this morning? Elaine, I see that Ken and Serge are attending the next office hour session. Oh, good. And then, and I think actually I see your name as well too. Are you planning on attending again with them, or was this? Yeah, in I'll place just of be that quiet one? and just listen. And okay. you know, yeah, yeah. It's great that you're attending as a team. I know that uh, Ken and Serge have participated in some of the other sessions as well. So collectively, like you can. Put your heads together to <laughs> yeah and you know and maybe i was supposed to just do that one i don't you know. it's fine, fine yeah, here too. we are yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and alina i'm curious since you were in the training yesterday on developing a theory of change and logic model like when nicole was walking through the questions in the application did you kind of see where, oh, okay, those are some of the things we talked oh, about absolutely. yesterday in terms of, yeah. yeah no, so. you guys are doing a really, really good job with helping people get even the spark of language in their head, right? Because, you know, when you're writing a grant, you have to write to the grant writer, right? Like, or the grant itself, right? And, and specifically for that grant. And so, you know, the core, and we as a, community want to the core values are super important for a healthy community right and to be able to uh serve the underserved and that's exactly what we're about right and so you know it's uh it's really it's a good match for us to be able to be thinking in this way to bring up what we naturally do and put a language to it right so um, it's just, you know, serendipity, right? It's, um, uh, it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> and you guys, uh, are really, uh, 
articulating the model really well. And it does fall right into alignment with what's needed to come out of us to be able to articulate what it is that we're doing. So um, yeah, no, they fall right into each other. And that piece about the, um, the, the, uh, the two different models weaving into each other, you can tell if you're not on the right link because they'll conflict, right? Like either way, if it's a, something that's going to uh, work, you can tell because it m moves into each other. If it's not gonna work, then it's opposing, right? And it's not going to, it'll just push out. Does that make sense? Yeah, and sometimes it's just a question of level of detail. Like something is brought, like a theory of change might be broader than the activities in your logic model and might want to tighten yeah, up. Yeah, you got to narrow it in. Direction. Yeah, exactly, exactly, right? So you're like, oh, or or not broad enough. Like it might be too narrow, right? That's right. And so, you know, it's like, oh, we have to like liberate in this, you know, or whatever, you know, uh, yeah, so. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's great to as um as an experiential thinker, right? Like, it it helps um to you know to just bring things alive. And and one of the other participants talked about that that other uh, going from the larger view down into the smaller view was a really important thing for that person to hear because it just clicked for her. That was beautiful to watch. You it know? was. We agree. Yeah. 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 And Zav, does this bring up any specific questions for you as you're seeing and hearing what's contained in the small tier application? Not really. Um, I think a lot of what was in this uh, presentation was just pretty clarifying for me. Just helped give me a bit more information to work with. As I as I go over the application in more detail myself, and I'm definitely going to spend some time on the YouTube channel as well. So Perfect. that's great, and and you're also welcome to sign up for future office hour sessions. That you know that's part of the reason why we scheduled so many of these sessions. We're we're starting off today mm -hmm. with the office hours uh, structured based on the grant tier people are thinking about. The future office hour sessions will be more general. So it's more of a, once you get going and started on your applications, I imagine other questions will come up. And so there's, you know, lots of opportunities to, you know, to hop on a call and, and, and it could be helpful too to hear what other people are asking and hear the responses to those. And sure. so we also hope it'll be a, you know, like a peer learning process. Mm -hmm. um, and then do you both know also about the, one-on-one -on -one TA that's available. Um, you guys talked about that, and uh, I, and I will leave that time for Ken and uh, Search because there are leaders of our committee. I'm just support, and you know we collaborate, but it's their. You know, I'm just gonna. You know, it's their cha cha. <laughs> so. Yeah, and they, yeah. Um, they, as Nicole said, they signed, they signed up for a session already, and I think Nicole even sent them the calendar invite, so that's good. They're, they're set for that. Good. So I'm going to share my screen for a moment, and I'll put the link in the chat to show you how you can sign up. Um, so the one-on-one -on -one TA sessions, we're using a Google Sheet yeah. um, to sign up for those. Are you seeing the sheet on my screen where basically you can decide okay when about when in this process do you want to get some more individualized assistance if you feel like you need that and then you can just pick a day and time that works That's for beautiful. you and fill in your name and contact information no, uh, and then one of us will send you a calendar understand. invite yeah. yeah no good yeah yeah, uh, it will not join in that process so that others have time. 